What's going on Chick-fil-A fam? We are back with another episode of In Heel Husband's House. Just to give you guys a quick recap, if you haven't been watching this series, uh, we came to my in-laws house. We dug around up in the attic and found a couple of totes full of, of Heel Husband's old action figures from when he was a child. Um, it's been a lot of fun going through those and I pulled an entire tote of different figures and throughout the series we've been pulling um, different figures and heel husbands been sharing what they are, what they mean to him, how they panned out in his figure federation, as well as, you know, any special memories that are attached to those figures. So he has no idea what's in this bag. I've just been kind of pulling it out. Um, and he's given me a little bit of insight. A lot of these stories I haven't heard. So it's exciting for me as well. So anyway, let's continue on and, uh, keep the fun going. Are you ready? Heel husband? Let's do it. All right. So tell me about this Shawn Michaels figure and this belt. Does this title belt, this winged eagle title go with this Shawn Michaels figure? Doesn't seem to, but. No, so this was a Just Toys Bendem Shawn Michaels. So the Bendems, they were a line that came out um, kind of in the dying days of Hasbro, but before Jax came in, Bendems were kind of the, the only thing we had to keep us going, which, you know, they, they got their charms. They look okay, like, in the box and stuff. The boxes always had really cool box art, but the figures kind of suck, you know. They're just bendies, which in the 90s, these were, like, Still really Still got a popular. lot of bendability, though. Yeah, mm -hmm. they, got, they got the wire in them, so you could do pretty much any move with them, but... Still kind of cartoony. You can see how the legs are skinny. The upper body is way too big. Um, but they were pretty cool. They had a lot of guys. Um, they were the, the first Diesel figure. Uh, it was actually a, a handful of guys that their first figure was a Bendem. So they got that going for them. But I was never a huge fan. But I did play with these with my Hasbros. This belt. So this was pretty cool. So uh, this was from the Jax Champions Pack that came out. It was a Toys R Us exclusive. I remember I got it for my birthday in uh, 1997 also. Like the Yokozuna figure we talked about last episode. But... Before this, LJN had released a couple of generic belts. They had like just kind of generic world titles and some generic tag team belts that didn't really correspond to what we were seeing on TV week to week. Hasbro had a pretty sweet world title, but that was it. But Jax was the first ones to release every championship. So I remember they came out with a pack. It had um, Owen Hart, the Bulldog, Undertaker, and one more. But it was basically the first time that we'd gotten every single championship belt, so we could actually um, you know have these titles and defend them in our in our figure federations and stuff. So really cool because it's kind of standard now you can't imagine having a figure line without belts um, nowadays for sure so even though so would you say did you have quite a few bendems or was it just like you just picked your favorites or were you still kinda in like just collector my, mode kind of just my favorites i had like if it was somebody that i didn't have a hasbro of um i would got them i don't really know how the sean michaels ended up because i hated sean michaels <laughs> during this time so maybe my little brother got him but um yeah it's kind of just the guys i remember razor ramon bendem i used it a lot in the diesel bendem those are kind of the two that really stand out Nice. All right, let's see what else we got in here. All right, tell me about this Hollywood, this Hollywood Hogan figure and what this red button, does he like wind up? Oh no, he's got like a, a battery pack on the so back. So that's one of the uh, infamous vibrating wrestling figures. These are again Whoa. from the old San Francisco toy makers line of WCW figures from the mid 90s. So. They originally came out with those sweet LJN replicas that were, that were pretty dang good. And then I don't, I don't know who came up with this that said, yeah, you know what we need? We need toys that, that vibrate. So if you hit the, the red button on the side, it doesn't work anymore, but they had this red button on the side you could press and the figures would kind of shake. Like, I don't know if that was supposed to simulate them being in a big move or what, but these are pretty much, I, I would say these are definitely in the mix for the worst wrestling figures ever created. They're like hard plastics. Mm -hmm. so you can't really play with them that much. They don't have much articulation either. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to go back and double check. This may have been the first Hollywood Hogan. I, I think this. I think the reason that I got these, I think uh, this line was the first that had Hollywood Hogan, Hall and Nash, and Crow Sting. So I think I got those four and no more. Um, and maybe they figured the only way they would sell these these crappy figures was if they had those four guys. But yeah, this repo, this is trash. No one should have these in any wrestling collection. <laughs> Sorry to all you vibrating uh, wrestling figure collectors out there. Your husband just shit on your on your collection so what about this guy this uh this ref here were refs pretty uh were refs pretty common back in the day all right so this was so Jax did release a referee figure this was the i can't remember if rimco had one in the awa line or not ljn had a, a referee but this was the first ref that we had gotten since ljn did one pretty good ref holding up the two count um he's kind of just a generic guy you know this didn't really correspond with like earl hebner or any of the rest of the 90s the funny thing about this one though if you can see 
I took a gold paint pen and filled in the white lines. So because I had, I got the original ref that came out and then I want to say a second ref came with like a, a ringside accessory set. And so this was my pay-per-view ref. So if I was just having like raw or like Sunday night heat, um, I, I would have the, the regular black and white stripe ref. But if I was having a pay-per-view with my figures, I had to bust out the gold stripe. So this was I like- I was wondering about the gold, yeah, th if it was this, like just wear and tear. No, nah, this was this was my own doing. This was a, a, a Seth Phelps custom when I was like 10 years old. But yeah, this was my pay-per-view ref. So this guy um, saw some classics go down back in, back in my bedroom. Awesome. Well, what about this <laughs> Double J figure we have here? So yeah, with Comic Con's coming up next month, and this is definitely on my most wanted list for Mattel to recreate. So this is uh, Double J, Jeff Jarrett from back in his country music days. Um, you know, you got the colorful attire with, I don't even know what you call these straps. I'm not sure what purpose they serve if you're a pro wrestler, but makes for a really Decoration cool figure. Really, yeah, really, really toyetic. This guy actually came with some bright sunglasses. Yeah, and he's a got hat. little holes you can see. I'll see if I can show you guys the little holes for his sunglasses so even though he had a little bit more success when he had the short hair and he was working his uh don't piss me off gimmick I, if i could have a jeff jarrett figure i'd want it to be this you know the country music singer really iconic from the mid 90s the new generation years which is when i was probably at my peak of, of loving wrestling awesome all right let's pull i got two more oh guess what i found another vibrating uh Wrestler, this is looks it, it, so, it was crow sting, but it looks like he'll has been yeah. uh, was joining the wolf pack at some point and repainted him to be wolf pack. That's another sting. Seth Phelps custom right there. Yeah, that was definitely a crow sting that I took a red marker to to make him into the, the red and black wolf pack sting. So it's a hell of a sh I, I definitely did this with just a sharpie, maybe even a magic marker. So pretty amazing that the, the paint's still on after all these years. Yeah, it is pretty. It is pretty amazing. Yeah, I, I think just, it had to be a paint pan because I mean, I, that's pretty. No, nah, it's definitely not a paint pan. It was definitely a marker. I just uh, I just didn't uh, play with these guys that much back then. Yeah, so grabbed one of those out of the bag. I didn't know there was another one of those in there. What about Mr. Fuji here? Yeah, so like we talked about uh, LJN was awesome on making the managers and I love Mr. Fuji's had a couple. He had a few releases with Jack's Classic Superstars. I love for Mattel to make him. You know, this was kind of like peak heel Mr. Fuji. I wasn't really digging him when he was in, um, you know, like the sumo gear with, with Yokozuna and stuff. I like when he was managing uh, Demolition and he was kind of like, you know, the, the stereotypical, um, you know, evil Asian character you'd see from the, the movies back in the 80s and stuff. But it's really an iconic manager. He came with a cane also that um, we no longer have, but just awesome figure. It'd be another one that Mattel should, should recreate. Yeah, I don't know why I really like this figure. I think I just like Mr. Fuji, R.I.P. Um, and our last figure of the day. Let me reach in here and try to find something. Something good. <laughs> okay, what is what is this? This is a honky tonk man. Hard plastic. Um, not a lot of articulation. So this was another Jax. This was part of the Two Tough series. So he's the hard plastic like the Marlena figure. We oh, at. yeah. Because yeah, this yeah. isn't wrestler honky tonk man. This is manager honky tonk man he was part of one of the other okay. two tough series i think he came with rockabilly whenever um billy gunn was kind of being like the the honky tonk man's protege but a really awesome figure you know honky tonk man is another one of those guys who's never really had a bad figure over the years from his hasbro to his ljn um his his jacks releases and especially all his mattels so a really a guy that really makes for a good figure you know it's really captures honky tonk man they did an awesome job on the suit it's actually mm -hmm. got some some texturing on here from all the uh you know, the, the bedazzlement or whatever on yeah. his jumpsuit. Really great figure, but yeah, this was a Honky Tonk Man was a manager during the, the early days of the, the Attitude Era, or the end of the new generation. Awesome, okay, cool, cool, awesome. Well, thanks guys for tuning in to another episode of In Heel Husband's House. We will be back with more fun. I'm gonna go dig around and find tons more action figures to pull and we can talk about, but I hope you all are having a great day and happy fig hunting.